We're, it's May 6th, and we're at the Alton VFW Post 1308, uh, May 6th, 2008, and we're with Russell Dunham, a Medal of Honor winner, and we're going to start off and ask you, how did you get in the military? How did I yeah. get in the military? I volunteered. When was that? In August uh, of 40. That was before the war started. That was before the draft, the month before the year-long draft started. Um, were you... Can I interrupt you a minute, though? Oh, go ahead. Never say winner. It's Medal of Honor recipient. Recipient. Okay, staying corrected. <laughs> they, they, I, I hate to say it. Well, know? no, live and learn. That's what, uh, you know, the... Uh, we used to have a guy who'd say, uh, I didn't win that. You talk like I won that in the crap game or something. <laughs> no, that's good. That's So were you expecting that there was going to be a war when you joined us? We knew there was going to okay. be a war. Okay. Um, where did you? Uh, Peoria. Okay. Where do you have your basic training at? I didn't have basic training. Went right into the seventh division. They was reactivating the seventh division. Okay. Under uh, General Stillwell. Okay. You've heard of him, yes. Nigger Ben. Mm-hmm. And uh, we went right in, you know. And then they they brought in guys from other outfits, as just non coms you know, when they when they first started in okay. the division. And then where were you, um, D-Day, I mean, D I'm sorry, um, when Pearl Harbor was bombed? <laughs> I was on furlough. <laughs> uh, that, we were stationed in San Francisco, Presidio San Francisco, and while I was on furlough, they moved the, the division up to uh, Fort Lewis, Washington. And when I got there, well, I was in a holdover, you know, to, they had a bunch of us was on furlough and mm -hmm. they to go, go up when the uh, war started. And I, I was in, uh, I was on furlough actually when the war started, when uh, Pearl Harbor was bombed. Because when I, I had a lady friend there in Oakland, we walked out of the show and civilian pulled up, hey, they hollered, you got to get back to your outfit, we're at war. Hmm. So I just left her stand on the corner and went on back to Frisco and they had an old sergeant there. He said, well, your, your photo ain't up yet. He said, get lost for a couple of days. So I just took off, you know. And when I turned, when I went back to the room, then we, we had a whole train load that went from uh, San Francisco up to uh, Fort Lewis. Okay. When Blackout. Did, when did you ship overseas then? Oh, I didn't ship overseas until uh, 42. We we that that's the only thing I think that saved a lot of us because we had a lot of training before we went overseas. We was the first ones that went over to North Africa. So you were, um, and what what kind of action did you see over there? And uh, well, in North we Africa, had a little, little scrimmage with the French, <laughs> the Free French. You know, they fought for three days, and then. Uh, we we went up then to the Spad, uh, Spanish Morocco border because they thought that at that time that Spain was going to get into the war on the German side, but they never mm -hmm. did. And then when the war was about over over there in May, it was May of '43, I guess it was. And uh, we went up there when. Uh, Germans gave up you know, Tunisia, but we didn't see much action until actually we got to Sicily. So you were in the invasion of Sicily? Yeah, that was the first, uh, 
real action that we've seen, you know what I mean, all the rest, the French and all, of course we lost men, but it was, well actually in Sicily we didn't have any real downright fighting. It was it July the 10th of uh, 43 we landed in uh, Sicily. And, uh, after we took Sicily, well then, uh, we were pulled back in Sicily and uh, were uh, scheduled to go to uh, England. But then when they got in trouble in uh, southern Italy, well they canceled that and sent us to southern Italy. To Solano. And then we, naturally we went up to Naples and on up across the Baltimore River and the Rapido River and until we hit the winter line up at Casino and we just couldn't break it. And that's when we uh, was pulled out and took training and went into Anzio. And that was a bloodbath there. What was what was your rank? Were you um you name it, I was there. <laughs> I had ever ranked ahead in the, eight yeah. days. The, how I was busted on New Year's Day. What year? Huh? What year was that? Do you remember? Nineteen forty-five. Okay. War was about over. That was eight days before I got the Medal of Honor. Okay. Um. So after Anzio, what happened next? Well, we pulled back and went back and took training and went into southern France at Toulon, near Marseille, down in uh, southern France. Okay. And we walked all the way up through France. Was this after D-Day or as part that of that? after D-Day. D-Day was, uh, when was that? The June, 6th? June 6th, 44. June, June the 6th of 44. And right. we landed down there in August 44. And you, and you went up and, and we connected with them coming the other way. Okay. To find a, a, a solid line across. Whose army was that? Whose army were you in? And Seventh Army, under General Patch. Oh, okay. When we landed in southern France. Okay. We was under uh, Clark in Italy, and Patton in Sicily. What were those guys like? Well, I don't know. They're just army officers. That's all. I don't know. I never did. The, I guess Patch was the best one we had. He was more of a soldier's. Uh, uh, Patton was actually a big blowhard. I mean, you know, he uh, done a lot of talking and mm -hmm. bragging. And, but he did treat the enlisted men pretty well, but boy, he, he was rough on his officers. Hmm. Okay, you, you're, you're in France now, you've, you've come up from the south, Yeah. and you joined up with the other army, mm -hmm. then then what happened? Well, we went into the Vatius Mountains. The first army that ever crossed through the Vatius Mountains was the 3rd Division. And, and knowing history, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, we got up to uh, Strasbourg, and then the uh, French were in trouble down around Colmar there, and we went down, was attached to the French First Army under General Latassi. That's when I got this Cote de Guerre we with the French Army. Okay. Down in, uh, and I was, well, when I got the Medal of Honor, we were with the French. With the French. Um, now, you were in the Battle of the Bulge? No, we was Battle of the North Wind, that was south of the Bulge. Okay. And were you captured? 
Yeah, I was captured uh, just for one day or two, though. What, what's that story? I shot the guard and got away. I got a book out. He's got my book. Did, didn't the guard, did, did he have the gun? I on had you? the gun. I still got the gun at home. And they talk about taking it away from me. It'll be over my dead body. Because that's a souvenir, you know, out of uh -huh. this world. I mean, you know. I had it in a shoulder holster way up here. Mm -hmm. And when they searched me, I had a lot of candy and cigarettes. I never did smoke. And when they found that, the uh, guys who were searching me got into a hassle over that. Uh, I thought they were going to get into fist fight, actually, until the German officer jumped in between them. Over the cigarettes? And cigarettes and candy, yeah. Uh, and they missed it. And they, uh, they took me back. I was about, I captured about, you know, just after daylight. I don't know what time it was. But anyway, about 4 o'clock that afternoon, they started to take me back. And they, it was a, I don't know whether it was the, uh, Rhine River, or it was the uh, canal. But anyway, there was a bridge there. And all the planes were lined up bombing that bridge, and they were going to take me across that thing. And uh, anyway, the driver got out and went to it. They called it a chateau. I mean, it was a tavern or some kind of, you know, big. Left me there with the guard, and I should, the guard about half asleep, and I pulled my gun and shot him. Ooh, I hated that. It bothered me all my life. Hmm. You still see him, you know, fall forward with blood coming out of his mouth, you know. But what are you going to do? I mean, you know, and I jumped out of the deep and went around and come back to Holswar. That's where they captured me, was Holswar. That's where uh, Audie Murphy got the Medal of Honor. He was the same outfit I was with, third division. So after you escaped, what, how did you get back to, to safe? Well, what would be safety? Huh? How would you? How did you get back to safety? Or well, to we were lucky. We all had on mattress covers. The Germans had on the same thing we did. They was dressed in that white. You couldn't tell the difference unless you talked to them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, when I first went in back into the place I was captured, I had that thing under my arm and I thought, oh boy, I've got to put this on. You know, I put it on. It was just a mattress cover with uh, holes in for your sleeves, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, um, I, I guided on, I could still hear our cannons shooting. I was that close, you know, well, you can hear them maybe for 35 miles, mm -hmm, I guess, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, whatever. And I knew the sound of our guns, that's where I had to get. It was back to them, you know. And I tried to retrace my steps as to where we'd come through the day before. And I uh, traveled all night, and the next day I knew I had to hide, so I just hid in a shell hole, and then the ne next night, well, I come on back across the lines. And the, the, uh, the engineers were working on a bridge across the Eel River. And I crawled up and listened to them for about, oh, I guess, a good half hour before I made up my mind that they, you know, that they were, they were at, because they had a lot of Germans at that time was talking English. Oh. And you didn't know, and they captured me. Hands up, hands up. I said, hey, I'm an American, well proven. I didn't have, they took, they'd taken my, all of my equipment and everything. I had no way of telling them, you know. 
But I wanted to take the straighten that out. Well, I, they marched me over to the our sister regiment, which was the 15th Infantry, and they had a big medical tent there. And they set me in a corner, and just so happened that I'd been to a rest center about a month or so before, yeah. and one of the medics come in and recognized me. Donald, what are you doing here? I says, hell, I'm captured, can't you see? <laughs> and boy, the whole world turned upside down there. And, they said, oh, boy. and then they told me uh, I wanted to get back to the 3rd Battalion of the 30th. And they said, well, we got an ambulance going back. And fire so, so I waited for the ambulance and they said stand in room only I says I don't care what I have to do I gotta get back to my outfit after I went about a half hour I just fell on the floor and went to sleep and I was already put in for the medal of uh, but they put me in for the DSC instead of the medal of honor and while after I was captured General Daniels was our general. He, mm -hmm. he got the citation and shipped it back. And uh, he says, this is worth a medal of honor. He says, you cancel this and redo it. You know what I mean? So for the record, what did you earn the medal of honor for? My citation? Yeah. Oh, I Heck, they got that everywhere. Well, I think they got me through nine captured, three machine guns, nine captured, and I don't know how many killed. I, I just, I can't read that Medal of Honor thing. Okay. Was it in all, just happened all at one time, or? Yeah. It, this uh, happened, the action only took where I got the Medal of Honor. Only took about three hours, I guess. That's the most. Okay, and w and where was that at? That was at Kaiserberg. Okay. That's all south of Lorraine. Okay. I think it was actually Lorraine. There's two countries there, Alsace and Lorraine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what they is uh, is disputed territory. The Germans had it, and the Americans had it, and everybody's had it, you know. And then when I went into the, when I got back to the third uh, to the medics, I, I uh, told him, I says, I told old Lieutenant w Captain Williams, he was at the time, he said, oh no, he says, you got to go back to hospital, he says, you're too bad a shape to stay with us, you know what I mean, so they sent me back and I thought I never got out of the hospital feet were froze, my ears were froze. Just from feet froze. the exposure? Just the exposure, yeah. And they was going to take my left foot. But, uh, when I got back to Epinal, I was so bad there that they wouldn't even, in the VAC hospital, that they didn't even try to transfer me. To, uh, oh, I guess I was there about a week before I was able to go back to Miracourt. France, and that's where I done my recuperation. Um, and I had to wait from December the 8th to uh, April the 23rd. See, that Medal of Honor's got to come back all through that, mm -hmm. through to the White House and back now. And it took them that long, you know, before it was approved. But I was decorated overseas. I was decorated overseas. Uh, do, do you remember who decor who? Patch. He, he did it. Patch. Okay. You remember what he said? Yeah. But you wouldn't put that down. <laughs> but he but he made it a personal message. Yeah. I, <laughs> says, don't you ever take no crap off of nobody. He says, you, if they go pushing you around, you. But naturally, I mean, you know, them guys, they talk big. But 
I was uh, uh, decorated in Nuremberg. You've seen them blow that. Mm -hmm. I was decorated. They blew that off, that swastika off. Oh, is that when they did it? Zeppelin Stadium, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. In fact, it was about killed a Jeep driver because a piece of that metal hit him. Oh. Jeep driver. Were, were there other people decorated at there that time? There was five of us. Okay. Colonel Ware, Tominick, myself, Adams, and Ross. Ross and I is the only two living. Adams and I were real good buddies. Not many Spanish. Not many Medal of Honor winners. Our recipients. <laughs> Our division had the most. The third division of World War II. We had more Medal of Honor. There was three in my platoon, which was very unusual. Adams and I and uh, Gibson. Mm -hmm. Gibson was killed on Anzio. Did Did you ever think that you were in the middle of something that was so big and historic? Did that strike you any? Not, not, not necessarily. No, I didn't. Uh, but they always told us this is a war. There'll be no more war. Even when I was discharged, they said there'll be no war, and Hank was back in war. It was 51, 50, 51 when I went into Korea. Mm -hmm. And I got out in 45. Okay, um, what what did you do with your, during your life? I worked for the VA all my life. For the VA? Okay. I, was a, I worked in Vietnam, I worked in Korea, I worked in Italy, and I worked in Germany. And what did you do for the VA? Consular. Over there, you know, I, in Nam, we talked to the guys right before they caught the plane. We had what they called a captive audience. <laughs> there wasn't nothing else they could do, you know what I mean, but wait for the plane. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what did he tell them? About the schooling and, you know, and to make, I always, I always was this way. I, when I worked for the VA, I had a lot of guys that would come in and say, well, I was hit, or I was this, or I was that, and no record of it. And I tell them, guys, I say, boy, before you get out, you get a record. Howdy. Hi. This is Laura Hi. from the Telegraph. I'm just uh, and You know Russell. And this is Joel. Hi. Hi. Natalie. I'll leave. I won't interrupt. I'm just okay. sit here and we, we disjoint. What's your name again? It's Laura. Did you last name too? Sally or Griffith. Okay. What did you do you in a me? I did. You were the first one we did for Veterans Voices. Now, so, did you go to Jerseyville that night? Mm. No, it wasn't your chance. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. I did. To come pick up your DVD? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. was there. <coughs> we've, we've been through World War II, and uh, we're talking about him working for the v <coughs> v VA in places like Vietnam. Okay. Um, then when did you retire? Or did you retire? Yeah, I retired in, uh, in 75. Right? <coughs> 1975. I retired on account of the Nam veterans wanting my job. Oh. Look around. When are you going to retire? When are you going to retire? Well, we want your job. <laughs> they didn't have to coach me too much. Okay.